The real question is uh, why standard architecture, all one word with lowercase yes. letters, yes. Uh, great. and why standard? <laughs> great, it's great. You see, it's, it's, in the US people usually get it uh, wrong because they put it separate and it looks more like corporate. Okay. But I made it into one word so that it's almost like German or you know, in Holland or in Europe, actually people never get it wrong. So they know it's standard no dash architecture. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and um, well, there are two layers of meaning. Of course, to be standard architecture means that every time we revisit the fundamental. So every week we do, every work we do, we go back to the most fundamental meaning of, of building. So it's not, it's definitely untied architecture standard. So it's, that's why I don't want to put these two words together to create a new word. Also, this meaning, this word is so neutral that it doesn't a, a imply certain specific form. By not implying specific style, we are free to do. So every time we do, we are the standard. You are the standard. <laughs> we're not, there is another... we're not going to buy, ab abide by any standard because we are the standard ourselves. Okay, <laughs> because there is a contradiction there because uh, there is anything, when you look at your work, it, it's anything but standard. Right. But it's a standard for you. Right, it's the, fundam it's, it's the fundamental meaning of architecture that means we should against any kind of a stereotype. You know, when it's very ambitious because if you yourself want to be the standard uh, every time, that you have to be very, very ambitious. I read this um, on your website, so I assume that uh, these are your words. Um, you said, although, although a standard architectures built works, often <clears throat> take, take exceptionally provocative visual results. Their buildings and landscapes are always rooted in the historic and cultural settings with a degree of intellectual debate. Mm -hmm. So about the debate part, does this mean that with every project you tend to make a particular point or statement? You see, one thing is clear that now every year there are millions and millions of buildings being made. And if we are just uh, serving industry, of course, it's okay. But um, it's up to some architects to actually inquire into the essence of our time, that what is lacking, what is uh, the next phase, and what is the problem of our time, that, that we raise questions and then we action into building. So in the end, it prov provokes and inspires other people. I think that's, that's how architecture is interesting as an as, um, important uh, um, so media of culture. And that's how you see your mission, the mission of your architecture, to inspire and provoke. Of course. A couple of years ago, you had uh, an exhibition at Aedes in Berlin, and mm -hmm. uh, it was called Contemplating with the Basics. Mm -hmm. So what was the main idea for that show, and uh, uh, why did you choose such a basic title? It's quite clear, you know, every generation of architects need to revisit this, these few basic questions. Why we built and and for what? You know, of course, there's. We need housing. We need uh, 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 cultural facilities. We need infrastructure. But beyond this, what what are the reasons we built and why our our building stands uh, outstanding and as a as a evidence of of the high point of our time. When, when people talking about our time, besides talking about kings and, and queens and you know, people talk about architecture. <laughs> <laughs> or people talking about architecture uh, that the kings and queens created. Uh, <laughs> so that means that without, uh, without questioning, uh, you know, that's, we have to, architecture is part of the most important part of our, uh, of, of, of every every uh, era 
in terms of uh, culture. And, and every generation could, by re-asking these questions, we can redefine the, uh, with, with a slightly different answer we can have greatly different uh, uh, result in architecture like like Bauhaus asked mm -hmm. the question you know what what's what's the appropriate uh, uh, way of building in in the machine age with efficiency um, as opposed to just adopting the classical where so was that exhibition about uh, asking these questions or was I think it about it was about to, some so we exhibited uh, part of the a series of project in Tibet um, which of course it was um, very fundamental at the same time we had uh, we showed a little bit of the Hutong uh, uh, revitalization project in Beijing and we showed one project of, uh, of uh, Novartis which mm -hmm. at the time very was very different not project right, right. Yeah. so but of course it was also asking about what's the possibility of uh, working place is it possible that working place not just as working place but as a living place so you live and work at the, at the same time, so, so it's, you enjoy life by working, not like you go to work and, and you take vacations to enjoy life. So, so it's the new question that leads to the new result. And you know, Novartis was also a very, very different, um, different uh, answer to, to the work, workplace question. Is it possible that we can be you know, even more strikingly innovative. Uh, so it sounds very humble question, but it's actually trying to think that, you know, is it possible that now after one, now after 100 years of Bauhaus, the revolution of architecture and design, is it possible that in our time, a new kind of rev revolution is in its brewing? I, it, it, I it think seems, it's possible. Yeah, it seems like for every generation, uh, revolution is uh, necessary, right? Mm -hmm. Revolution, kind of literally, revolution right. against uh, the previous generation. Right. You said something I want to clarify. You said, I do think in the coming decades, the boundary of art and architecture could become more intertwined. Uh, but don't you think that now, the reverse is happening. Um, if in the nine, if the late nineties and early two thousands architecture was declared to be an art project, now architects run away from this comparison and uh, insist that architecture is a social project. Why do you see that art and architecture would be more intertwined in in the future? Well, you, um, this architecture as a social project does not prevent it to be an art project at the same time, right? It's just like contemporary art can also be a social project. What is the essence? So what is the essence for you? It's not about beautifying, it's about what? What's your own mission? Uh, apart from your client's mission? Um, architecture has that um, spiritual power. Nobody can deny it. No matter if it's you know, a small, small living space. Eight square meters. <laughs> yeah, or it's a, it's a you know, you know, workplace. And then you don't, you don't, you should, you don't get that spiritual power into physical existence that easy. You know, it's even in very ordinary building like a, you know, like a Hutong transformation, mm -hmm. it's possible to have that spiritual power, that energy of itself. 